In the previous video, we started playing with interactivity, mouse X and mouse Y, and in doing so, I made this, right? And this is, uh, it's kind of fun. It's not super impressive, but it's neat what I could do with only, what, five lines of code? Maybe six if you want to say create canvas. So that's pretty cool. And that got me to thinking some other things. So I played with point also in the previous video where it followed mouse X and mouse Y. But that was only one thing, right? In this, we have multiple lines that create this sort of target effect, right? So I was thinking about maybe combining those, and I had some ideas on what I want to do with that. What I'm going to do is, instead of having, let's see, so we have stroke, mouse x, zero, mouse y, line, 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 okay. Why did I do the stroke? What did the stroke even do? Oh, that's the color, right? So that's that's so the color can change, and that's that's fun, right? Because the uh, the stroke defines the color, right? And that's why the color changes, right? So now what I've seen is, is instead of lines doing points, and we did this a little bit already, right? I had done point, and I had done mouse X, and I had done mouse Y, but I did it without color. And that's fine, but there's I have some better ideas on what I want to do with it, right? So you can see there's a little bit of color there. It's small, but I'm okay with that. But then what I was thinking is, what if we uh, made sort of like a kaleidoscope type thing, or a mirror effect, right? So I could duplicate this point, and I could instead do... I could instead modify mouse X and mouse Y using some math. So that's one of the things about programming that makes it very different from markup. So in SVG or HTML or some of those markup languages, you can't do math. Now you can attach JavaScript to it to do math, but then you're using JavaScript, which is what we're using here. So we're doing this with one language instead of having to combine languages. So right now, the dots are right underneath my mouse. I could change that a little bit, so maybe I do uh, minus 5 and minus 5, so I have a little bit of offset, right? That might make it easier to see, right? Although I've got two points, right? So now I've got this trailing effect. I wasn't meaning to have a trailing effect, uh, but it does make it, I think, a little bit easier to see. Instead, what I was meaning to do was having a mirror effect. So. This is the X plane, right? And this is the Y plane. So if I want a mirror on the X, then I need to flip it. I need to flip the X value. So if I multiply this by negative one, that should flip it. And this is the multiplication sign. And of course we have a negative one. We'll see what happens. Could I do, could I do 0.5? Would 0.5 do the same thing? No, that'd be half. We'll see what happens with negative one. And I should be able to use parentheses too. That should work. Let's see what happens. Nope. Negative one did not work. What if we put negative one in parentheses? Does that work? No. Oh, maybe it is working. Maybe it's just out of the screen. Ah, that's probably what it is. So, right now, when we're doing this, um, <laughs> our coordinate plane is not, like there's not zero in the middle, right? And I'm kind of acting like there is, right? So really what's happening right now is when I'm drawing here, there's another version of it way over here. So how do I get that on here as well? I need to, hmm, maybe my idea earlier of doing by, Point five. Maybe that was correct. Let's see what happens if we do that. There we go. Now we've got this this repeated thing. That's kind of what I was going for. Although I was uh, wanting it to be a complete mirror and not just a copy, but that's still sort of interesting, although it's also squashed. Hmm. The other thing that I was thinking about is having it sort of uh, with four of them, right? So if I make another version and this one could be 
times 0 0.05 as well. And then maybe I could have one more. This one would be minus 5 to get that slight offset. Let's see what happens. Oops. Multiplying by minus 5. There we go. That's kind of neat, although each one is uh, slightly more squished than the other. But it's not a true reflection, so how would we do a true reflection? I think that is where we need to have the uh, multiplying by a negative number, right? Because this is just cutting it in half. I think my idea was proper. We just need to, like, maybe add 200 to it, 400 to it. Let's see. So this is width by height, right? This is, yes, we're definitely wider than we are short. So if I add 600 to this, what will that do? Maybe 300. I don't know. Let's try it out. Instead of just supposing, There we go, now we have a mirror. And as we come back this way, then it starts to mirror there too, right? So that's kind of what I was going for. I need to figure out how to get this position to shift. So if this is 300, then what if I do 600? Maybe my initial idea was correct. Although on the vertical, that looks pretty good. It's a little, it's a little bit too far down. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking on the vertical, I need 400. And on the horizontal, I need 600. Still not quite in the middle, but it's definitely closer. Or is it the middle? Oh, it is. I got it in the middle. There we go. So now we have this cool kaleidoscope thing. Now my points are kind of small, so how can I make my points bigger? I'm doing stroke and I'm doing points. And a points are just a dot. I could use circles, but that would mean that I would have to add a lot more attributes than just the points. I don't really feel like doing that. What if I do stroke weight? How big should my value for this be? I don't remember. Let's try it out and see what happens. Ooh, that's super huge. I don't want my stroke to be that thick. Maybe 10. There we go. That's cool. Now, this is just sort of... Uh, playing with and experimenting with what I showed you last time, but we didn't really add anything new to it, right? Well, I mean, I mentioned math, right? You can do math with uh, programming languages, and that's cool. But uh, what about a new thing that actually makes this interactive in a different way? And my thought on that was to actually include clicking, because right now this is always tracing along, right? So I can't really draw anything except for this continuous line, right? So how do I make it so it only does it when we click. So to do that, we need to use a conditional. So a conditional is like if and else. If something happens, then do this, else do that, or don't do anything in this case, right? Because I want it to draw when they, um, when they click. So p5.js has this incorporated in already, so it's really easy to do. Uh, the conditional part is just part of regular JavaScript, so that's nothing special. So we can do if mouse pressed and this is the this is the p5 uh, library the the special processing library that uh, allows that and has that already set up for us so if that is equal to true two equal signs right if we use one equal sign we're telling it that it's going to become something right now we don't want that we want it to check if it is equal to something so to check if it is equal to something we use two equal signs so I'll say true, and then we need to open a curly brace. This sort of uh, structure is similar to this sort of structure. So this draw function does whatever is between these two uh, curly braces. This is the same thing. 
whatever I put in these curly braces will happen as long as the mouse is pressed. So I'm going to take all of this, I'm going to cut it, Command X, I'm going to paste it in between those two curly braces. So now all of this should happen only if the mouse is pressed. Now there is if, which also implies that there should be not if, right, which uh, we call else. So that would be else. And then for else, you put things in curly braces. Once again, the same thing. And whatever you have here will happen if this has not happened. Now, I don't necessarily want anything to happen. I just want it to draw if you are clicking. So I actually can just delete this altogether. But I'll show you that it works anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, this background color, right? And uh, let's just say that maybe it completely erases <laughs> whatever you did if you aren't pressing. So we could say FFF, right? Now if I refresh, nothing's happening, right? I'm not clicking, I'm just moving the mouse around. If I draw, okay, that's working. So I'm pressing down and it's letting me draw. If I let go, it's, it immediately deletes it. So that's working. Now that wasn't exactly what I had in mind yet, but it does work. Um, let's delete else and see if that works. And it does, so now I can draw, right? I can decide what, um, where I want there to be lines and where I don't. Oh, I ran out of space, that's okay. But I still had another idea that I wanted to kind of play with too. So I just used the background function a moment ago and I did that for a reason. The reason why I brought the background function um, a moment ago was to incorporate that in in a different way. Right now I've got no way to get rid of this, right? Like this just keeps building on top of itself. And that is kind of cool in some regard, but what if I want it to slowly clear? So I could put the, the background in here, right? Like I had when, uh, when it's not clicked. And I did that by doing background. And then I did in the uh, double quotes, I did three Fs, right? So that's the color of white. And if I refresh, now it's running all the time, right? And that's not really what I want either. I mean, it's kind of neat, right? It's, it's following my cursor around, but that isn't quite what I want. This is with three values. Like we did with the shapes, if we add in an extra value, that adds transparency. And we can do that with the background too. So if I add in uh, maybe a one, and I refresh it, that's kind of cool. Now we have sort of this tracer effect. Now it is disappearing kind of fast, and maybe I don't want it to disappear fast. Right now for these hexadecimal values, I've been using just three symbols, one F, well, one digit for red, one digit for green, and one digit for blue. But you can actually uh, increase the resolution of that if you want to think of it that way. You can use two values. So when you're using just one value, each of these can only be a value from zero to F, which is essentially 16 different values. If you use two values for each one, now each one has a range of 256 values, 0 through FF, or 0 through 255. So what I could do then is instead of only having 1 or 0 as my lowest numbers, I could split this in half, right? 0, 8 would effectively be half of 1. You might be thinking, well, why isn't it 5? But that's because this goes up to F, right? This goes up to 15. So 8 is going to be a better midpoint for that than uh, 5 would. So I need to delete these spaces because the spaces don't go there. So this is now what a hexadecimal value looks like. If you've got two for red, two for green, two for blue, and two for the alpha for the transparency. So let's see if it works. There we go. Now it fades quite a bit slower, right? So that's, that's cool. And actually, parts of it take a long time to fade, right? Like some of those, I don't know, do they ever completely fade? They should eventually, right? 
but it's so it's such a small amount that it's fading each moment that it's gonna take a long time for those to completely fade out because each time it's only adding what um, one thirty tooth one thirty tooth of a of a shade of white right and um, yeah so that's that's gonna take a while for that to to completely fade out does it ever fade out completely I'm not sure if this ever actually completely fades out it doesn't look like it is so what if I increase this? What if I try putting it right in the middle? So 88 instead. Would that be the middle? 88? Yes, it would be. If I refresh, well, that's fading really fast. And that definitely looks like it's going away. What if we try uh, 44, 22? Is there still some ghost lines? I feel like I can still see it a little bit. I wonder if it never entirely goes away. That is interesting. Yeah, you can still see that, right? Like, it's not completely gone. Hmm. Because by now, if it really is adding uh, that much white on top of it every, like, millisecond or whatever, these colors should eventually disappear, but they are not. So that's just something interesting to note. I'm not sure what you would do with that. I'm not sure how you would fix that in the coding. I'm sure there's a way, but how would you uh, be able to erase those without also wiping out the the newer strokes? I suppose what you could do is you could uh, write some code or figure out how to write some code. You could measure the duration when um, when a user isn't clicking, right? And if it's been long enough that everything should completely fade out, then it could just maybe wipe it out completely to pure white. Hmm. Anyway, this is kind of a fun thing. You should try it out and play with it and see what else you can do.